Hi, so uh, this lesson is going to be macromolecules and enzymes. These next two weeks are going to be all about biochemistry, which is very, very difficult. So you want to make sure that you're doing some studying. Um, you're looking over these guided notes. We'll do a lot of activities also to help you get ready. So first thing is you want to write in this learning target. So the learning target is identify and describe the basic molecular structure and function of each of the four macromolecules. So there are four macromolecules for each one. You need to know um, what it looks like, and we'll help with that. I have a quiz for that, and what it does. So it all begins with carbon. Carbon is an element that, if you guys look, it can bond with many elements, and it's said to be organic. When it says organic, basically it's saying that it's in all living things. Um, if you look on the outer shell of the carbon, there's four. Um, there are four electrons. Um, these electrons like to share with other elements, so that's why it bonds with so many elements, because it can bond here, 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 and here. Um, the elements, carbon has four electrons in the outer shell, which I just showed you, so it can form covalent. Covalent just means to share, you hear that word often, um, bonds with other atoms, and it will share with other carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. These are for living things, so you're going to see these over and over again. Um, this here will be like lipids, you have your amino acid here, and this is like a sugar molecule right here. So right now this looks like probably... Um, does not look familiar to you, but by hopefully by Friday, you will be able to look at this and identify it easily. So macromolecules. Macromolecules are large organic molecules found in living things. So in a living thing like a human or a plant, you can just find all four macromolecules. You'll find um, all of them. Uh, macromolecules are split up into monomers and polymers. Uh, the monomer is a smaller unit that form into large molecules. A polymer is made up of smaller pieces. So the polymer is made up of many monomer monomers joined together. So if you take a look, I put this diagram here. So a monomer would have like one, um, so you'd have like one small molecule. And in a polymer, it would be that same small molecule repeated over and over and over again. And that is basically, this would be like your huge macromolecule, and your macromolecule are made up of smaller pieces called monomers. Mono means one, poly means many. So mono, just one small molecule. The polymer, which would be like your huge macromolecule, are made up of repeating units. So your four macromolecules are carbohydrates, or carbs, as we use them in like plain words, lipids, which are fats, proteins, and nucleic acids, which are your DNA and RNA. So those are your four macromolecules. You and your body, you need all of these things to function, so we get them from food, um, which is kind of what the activity that we did yesterday. So carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So we're going to start with carbohydrates first. Um, the structure, so I, what I did for each one of these, I, I split up for structure, function, monomer, and polymer. So you'll be filling out a chart at a later time to organize this, but for now, it's organized uh, the way that it is in the guided notes. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those are the three elements that make up carbohydrates. All of them will have carbon. That's the basic. Um, but this one on top of that has hydrogen and oxygen. The function is to store and release energy. So carbohydrates are in our body. Um, during cellular respiration, for instance, we will take that sugar, break it down, and use it for ATP or energy. Um, so the monomer, the small piece, so one glucose molecule, is called a monosaccharide. So mono, one, saccharide, sugar, one simple sugar. There are four types of monosaccharides. You have glucose. Um, that's the sugar used in cellular respiration and photosynthesis. You'll know that very, very well. Galactose, which is in milk. Mo mothers produce that in their milk. Ribose, RNA, and deoxyribose in DNA. So if you take a look over here, um, the monomer will look like this. It has the shape always. So if you see this shape, it is a simple sugar or a monosaccharide. Polymer more than one sugar. So the polymer is going to be this repeating, either two, a disaccharide, or many polysaccharide. So a disaccharide, di means two, sugar, saccharide means sugar, so two sugar molecules. You have sucrose, lactose, and maltose. So really 
um, you need to just make sure if you see two of these that it's a disaccharide. Polysaccharide, more than two. Um, so that would be this glucose molecule. So you have your monomer repeated over, and bond, they're all bonded together. So bonded, bond, bond. Um, poly, many saccharide sugars. Um, starch, so that's going to be your, this would be like your bread. So if we take a bread from a microscope, uh, muscles. Um, so not only is muscles made out of protein, it also produces glycogen for um, energy. And then cellulose, that'd be like in your lettuce and your corn. So carbohydrates, that's the first micromolecule. Monomer, one. Polymer, all together. Um, the next one is a protein. The protein, again, of course, will have structure. So we're about structure, function, monomer, and polymer. So your structure um, obviously has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but also has nitrogen in this one. Um, the function is storage. Let's move this up real quick. Um, function, storage, transport, regulate hormones, movement, structure, and enzymes are made out of it as well. So these are all different functions for proteins. Um, there are things in your body um, to help it. Um, the monomer is called an amino acid, and your amino acid will be will end in I-N-E at the end. So if you ever see a word, um, like adenine, guanine, cytosine, those are all amino acids. They end with I-N-E. When we do DNA, when we learn about genetics, you will really know it. Um, there are more than 20 different types of amino acids found in nature. Um, so the chemical structure of the R group, uh, which is right here, this is the R group, this is what's going to change one amino acid from another. Okay. So when you're looking at your amino acid, you'll see um, the two hydrogens connected to the nitrogen, the carbon in the middle, hydrogen going up, your R group here, double bond with oxygen, and then your hydroxide over here. Okay, so you'll always see like the same shape over and over again. Again, we'll practice this with this. Polymers, many amino acids form polypeptide chains called proteins. So if you take this and you link them all together, you would get a protein. Examples of protein are enzymes and hemoglobin, which is in your blood. Okay, so proteins. The next, the next macromolecule are called nucleic acids. The structure will be a five carbon sugar, so one, two, three, four, five. So this is your five carbon sugar. Um, it says pentose, so there should be a C. So C, 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 there should be C's in each of these corners, as I showed in this picture. A phosphate group, which is this, there's a phosphorus um, bond to different oxygen molecules, and a nitrogen base. So you'll see this structure over here with all your nitrogen. So five carbon sugar, your phosphate group, and nitrogen base. So when you see this structure, you are looking at a nucleic acid. Um, in your DNA molecule, which will be your polymer, which I'll talk about in a minute, will be that double helix. But, um, function, transmit, heredity, or genetics. So if you see anything about genes, genetics, heredity, you know you're talking about nucleic acids. The polymer, easy, it's called nucleic acid. <laughs> um, there's two types of nucleic acid, DNA, which is called deoxyribose nucleic acid, and RNA, which is ribonucleic acid. Uh, again, when we do genetics, you're going to know this very, very well, but for now, you just know what it looks like and um, just know the monomer polymer. Okay, last but not least, we have something called lipids. Um, so your lipids, fats, not soluble in water, the structure, carbon, and hydrogen. So if you take a look down here, the way to look at this and know the difference, a long string of carbon, long string of carbon. And the difference between saturated and unsaturated, I'll get in a minute, but there's a double bond between here. Okay, so that's how you can tell you're looking at a lipid. So carbon and hydrogen lipids are non-polar molecules that repel water, um, which is non which is polar. So your water is polar. Uh, we'll do a lab with this uh, when we learn about water. But lipids repel water, as we know. If you put oil in water, it doesn't mix. The function stores energy. Cell membrane, it's our cell membrane. Um, steroids, part of your hormones is steroids. It insulates the body or insulates anything, and it's a waterproof covering on living organism. A formation, um, so you have a glycerol molecule that combines with a fatty acid. Okay, so that's how it forms. Um, you have two different types. You have saturated and unsaturated. As you see, it's not really a monomer and polymer. Yeah, you have glycerol, and it's combined with fatty acids over and over, but it doesn't technically classify that. So your saturated fatty acids, there's no double bond. And is it bad for health? I put a question mark there because there's conflicting data. Too much of it, yes. So this would be like your butter, your cheeses, your red meats. 
unsaturated fats, you have a double bond and that's said to be better for your health. It can be your olive oils and peanut oil, more food, but more plant-based. Okay, so there's your lipids. Not soluble in water. And there's, when you say lipids, you should think right away, fats. Okay, so I gave you guys this diagram. Um, I gave you like the cellular structure, so you really zoomed out. DNA, so this is your nucleic acid chromosome. A protein, oops, sorry. Um, and your lipids, so these are your four. Your polymer um, would be, um, actually let's start with monomer. Your monomer would be like, this is your monosaccharide, and all of them linked together would make a starch, right? Your polysaccharide. Um, and then you have your nucleotide, your nitrogen base, five carbon sugar, and your phosphate group. This, a lot of times this is what you're gonna see, not really the other one, which is a lot more difficult. When you put them all together, you get that double helix DNA strand. Amino acid, um, you have your R, your, um, your nitrogen, um, and then that double um, bond here. And when you put all your amino acids together, you get a polypeptide. Um, the reason why they just put the first three letters instead of the I and E at the end is because we know that at the end it's going to be this alanine, you know, alanine, the serine. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then you've got, sorry, um, and then you got your fatty acid, remember long chain of carbon. Um, and then you put it all, if you zoomed out, you see a triglyceride, and then you have your lipid. Okay, so just talking about um, enzymes here, or enzymes and chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction um, occurs, you have your reactants and products, um, you have your activation energy, the energy needed to get a chemical reaction started. So basically you start off with something, and a chemical reaction occurs, and it just it doesn't Nothing is lost. Remember, in science, nothing can be created nor destroyed. It just scrambles. So all the elements go in different places. Um, I'll show you an example of that with cellular expression exactly. Um, so activation energy is the energy needed to get a chemical reaction started. An enzyme is a catalyst, and its job is to speed up chemical reactions without using so much energy. And that's what it means by lowering activation energy. So an enzyme, which is a protein, um, is used so that you don't have to use so much energy. If you don't have enzymes, um, let's say it gets destroyed, then you're going to be using a lot more energy um, in order to get something done. Um, so if you take a look at this graph, energy, this is your reaction. As the reaction is occurring, if you have an enzyme, less energy. You guys see that? So you don't have to use as much energy. So the more you go up, the more energy you need. If you didn't have an enzyme, your body would use a lot more energy and you feel tired, lethargic, sick after. Um, and yeah, so, and then after the product, you actually go back. But this is with enzyme, without enzyme. You will get a question about this later. Um, you can destroy your enzymes. If it's too hot or too cold, you can destroy your enzymes. Um, if your pH is off, you can destroy your enzymes. Um, and your enzyme activity will decrease. So, very important. Um, and I think we are done. I hope I didn't go too fast with you guys. We are going to practice, practice, practice. I know it's a lot, but I hope I gave it to you guys in an orderly way so you can understand it. We're going to practice using Quizlet and other things. Okay? Thank you. Have a good day.